uh, joint work with uh, Jose Diaz uh, at the University of Barcelona. It's still uh, very much a work in, in progress. It's also based on previous work that, that I did. Uh, well, the, the structure and, and the idea of the talk is the following. Uh, I'll make a short introduction about uh, what it is and why it is uh, desirable to test the meta theory. I'll give an example reconstruction using a particular meta theory, which is a meta theoretical structuralism. Then I'll show a computer program where these uh, tests of meta theories, uh, I mean, they can aid in the, uh, in actually doing this sort of uh, test. And then we'll move on to some philosophical discussion uh, on a series of uh, topics, mainly holism, uh, the issue of uh, meta-theoretical predictions, and structuralism as an empirical theory. And then I'll move to some conclusions. Okay, so I know that you all know this, uh, but just so that we're in the same page, uh, what exactly is a meta-theory? theory about scientific theories. And philosophical meta theories in particular have historically been used to answer questions such as following. How do theories uh, explain and, and or predict? Uh, what is the logical structure of theories? How are the statements of the theory uh, related? I mean, there are a set of axioms, for example, that if one accepts those, uh, then the rest of the statements of the theory follow, or, well, we'll, we'll see some examples in, in a few minutes. Uh, how do theoretical terms or new terms uh, gain empirical meaning, well, et cetera. Right, so a well-known meta theory, maybe the first like, research program in, in empirical science was the, the logical empiricist meta theory. Uh, according to them, a theory consists of a formal axiom system, which contains the laws of the theory. And these laws are formulated using uh, only theoretical statements, but it's statements that contain only theoretical concepts. And then there is also a set of correspondence rules, which are mixed statements. And they contain both uh, theoretical and observational statements. And they connect the laws of the theory and the theoretical concepts with the empirical like, observational statements. And that's how one makes, for example, predictions and how one explains in general. So the details of this proposal change significant, significantly over time, uh, specifically the logical form of the correspondence rules. There's a very long discussion on that. But I mean, as you also probably know, this meta theory was largely abandoned uh, for several reasons. We know that today it has a lot of conceptual problems, but also because it was never very fruitful for the actual uh, reconstruction of theory. But still, the idea of using uh, formal tools to analyze theories did remain in more modern uh, frameworks, and of course, in a very modified way. So for example, in structuralism, which is the, uh, the research program that I work in, uh, theories are usually thought of as class of models, classes of models instead of uh, statements. Uh, though, of course, the classes of models are still specified by axioms. So I, I personally don't think that this is a very important point. But uh, there's also some, there are also many changes in the theoretical versus non-theoretical distinction, which is made relative to theories and uh, decoupled from the issue of observability. So if a term is theoretical for a given theory, if and only if every way of determining or oper operationalizing that term, that concept, uh, presupposes the, the loss of the theory. One has to make use of the loss of the theory in order to uh, give an, an extension to the concept. Uh, also, the scientific Laws are typically mixed statements. I mean, they contain both uh, theoretical and non-theoretical terms. Uh, and there are also many uh, issues regarding the 
like the logical structure of the theory. For example, special laws are not derived from fundamental laws. The structurally postulate other uh, relations, for example, the specialization relation, well, etc. The details, again, don't matter very much for the purposes of this talk, but I, I just want you to keep in mind the idea that there are more modern frameworks that still attempt to do basically the same things that uh, the logical empiricists were trying to do and to answer similar questions. Uh, unlike the logical empiricist meta theory, uh, structuralism has been very fruitful for the formal reconstruction of actual scientific theories. Uh, there are many examples from physics to biology to the social sciences, etc. But however, once one has made a, a reconstruction using this framework, uh, typically one doesn't have any systematic means of checking the adequacy of the meta theory itself and of checking the adequacy of the reconstruction, right? Uh, I mean, one usually looks like by eye uh, at the statements and sees if they sort of match up with what we intuitively understand, but uh, that there's no mean to test if the, the, the product of, of the meta theory is okay or not. So uh, I have two main goals in this uh, work. The first is to develop a systematic way of testing reconstruction and meta theories indirectly through them, and to discuss in which ways these tests uh, resemble the test of empirical theory. So uh, let us begin with an example so you have a better idea of what I'm talking about. Uh, so typically, one, one sets out to do a formal reconstruction in any, meta, in any meta theoretical framework. One begins, I mean, step zero is uh, being a competent user of the theory in question. For example, being able to recognize typical cases of uh, successful applications and typical failures, anomalies, etc. cetera. Uh, once one has become a competent user of the theory uh, or is a competent user of theory, uh, one has to identify the boundaries of the theory, uh, choose between different formulations, uh, etc., and then uh, you typically recognize the, what the conceptual apparatus of the theory is and what the set of uh, and the set of claims that the theory makes with this conceptual apparatus. Uh, and within them, you you usually distinguish between the explanandum. Uh, in the, the concepts and the statements that the theory wants to account for versus those in the plan, like the, the ones that the theory postulates to account for. And only after one has uh, like this informal understanding of what the theory is, what it says, uh, what it intends to account for, how it accounts for it, then uh, you formally reconstruct it using a particular metatheoretical apparatus in a particular formal language. Right? So that may be first order logic, set theoretic predicates, category theory, etc. So, I mean, let, let's do the, let's take the first two steps very quickly with a very simple sample. Say uh, we have a in, in classical mechanics to which we attach a body. The spring has no mass. Uh, so what will happen is that gravity will pull the, the center of mass, of mass of the body down with the, this force. And the spring will, put the, will pull the body up with the, this other force. This is Hooke's law. And we also know by the second principle that the sum of the forces is equals mass times acceleration. Um, so let's take some example values. Let's say that the gravitational constant is 9.8, that the units don't matter very much here, and that the spring constant is 1, and that the mass of the body is also 1, so 1 kilogram. And let's say that at time 0, the position of the body, let's call it 
position zero uh, up here. And uh, we want to know what the position will be once the body is at equilibrium. Right? So initially, we know that the, uh, since the mass is one, that the gravitational force is 9.8 uh, Newton, that Hooke's force is zero because we just attached the body to the, the string. It hasn't moved yet. So acceleration will be 9.8. The body will be pulled downward. But we also know that in uh, at the second time, acceleration will be zero because the body is at equilibrium. It means that uh, since uh, gravitational force is still the same, Hooke's force has to be minus 9.8. So if you clear this equation, it gives you that position at the, the position at the final time will be uh, 9.8 meters or whatever you need of measure you want. So let's say that with this we have an understanding, an informal understanding of at least a portion of classical mechanics. Right, so to formally reconstruct this uh, with structuralism, uh, we begin by specifying what the improper axioms are, or the potential models. I mean, that is stating the concepts and the lexical type. Uh, so, for example, this is how we would uh, reconstruct this portion of classical mechanics. We have all of these concepts, a set of particles, a set of timings. Uh, they're basically the same concepts as, as before, but with the correct logical uh, type attached to them. So, position will be a function of a particle and a time. Mass will be a function of a particle. Uh, forces will be will also be functions, and uh, these are just con constants. And once we have that, we just formulate the same loss as before, but with the correct logical formulation, right? For every particle and every time, the sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. Uh, acceleration is actually a defined concept, but I have it for uh, simplification purposes. The primitive, and then this is the uh, Hooke's law, and this is the uh, law of free fall. On uh, it's just the same thing that we saw before, but correctly formalized in a formal language. So, okay, let's say that we have a formal reconstruction of our theory. The question now is, well, how do we test that this reconstruction is adequate? And in this case, I've chosen the, a very simplified version of uh, mathematics theory. So it's very easy to see by eye that this is more or less OK. But realistic case studies are much more complicated. So for example, this is a portion of uh, my reconstruction of cladistics, which has a lot of concepts, a lot of uh, axiom. And, it, and it's not easy to see immediately that uh, this is a correct formalization. So uh, the, the main idea of the talk is, again, to develop a procedure to be able to test uh, formal reconstruction. So how do we do that? Well, at the end points of the reconstruction uh, process, we have first an informal understanding of how the theory should behave for specific applications. This is what I uh, would have step uh, zero before, and the formal representation of both the theory as a set of axioms or classes of models or whatever, and of the applications as particular models. So the idea is that uh, you codify applications as uh, models in the logical sense, and you formalize the, your informal understanding of the loss of the theory as a set of formalized laws. So what should happen is that when, the, when informally you consider an application to be a successful application of the theory, then the corresponding model should satisfy the formalized law. Right? Uh, so yeah, exactly that. Models that codify paradigmatic, uh, paradigmatically successful applications of the theory should satisfy the formalized law, and vice versa for models that are paradigmatically or informally considered to be unsuccessful. So the computer program that I made, uh, that I programmed, basically allows one to check uh, the lower part. Right? 
So let me show you very quickly an example. And you don't see it directly there. Uh, so uh, in this computer program, you input the, oh, you can see. That's better. So uh, again, this is a program you you have to provide a, you have to load the reconstruction uh, formal reconstruction already made. Uh, so if, for example, you input what the language of the theory is. Uh, that is the set of concepts that I just uh, showed you. Right? There's a set of particles, a set of uh, time instant, etc. Then you load uh, the loss in a formal language. For example, this says for every x, for every particle, and every time, the sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. Uh, the syntax of the program is designed to be as close as possible to the formal syntax that we use uh, every day, but using letters in order to be able to enter them with a computer keyboard more easily. And once you have loaded the laws, I mean, this is Hooke's law, for example, uh, and the law of free fall on Earth of gravitation. Then you load some models, some specific models. So, for example, in this first model, you have, we have a single particle called P, two time instants called T1 and T2. Uh, we load the values of the, of the constants and et cetera. And the, forces, the accelerations, and the positions. And once we have done all this, we can go to the query, the query module, and ask, for example, if the model, uh, model M1 satisfies uh, the loss, and it should say true in the state, right? And both, both for the fundamental and the special so in this first model, all I did was to translate exactly the values that I just showed you on, on the screen. In the second model, for example, it's exactly the same as the first, only that in T2, instead of uh, the body being in position 9.8, it's, it's in position 10. So this should be an incorrect, uh, this doesn't, sat intuitively this doesn't satisfy uh, the loss of classical mechanics, right? So what we would expect is that the program tells us that uh, the, the formal model doesn't satisfy our formalization of the law, if our reconstruction is uh, adequate, of course. So if we do that and we ask if M2 satisfies the uh, formalizations, it will tell us false for six blocks, for example. Um, yeah, so that's the, the basic idea of how one should test uh, a formal reconstruction. There are many other ways in, in which the program can uh, help us uh, test reconstructions, but this is just one that, and the one that I'm interested in in this talk. Okay, so some uh, philosophical discussion surrounding uh, all this, which is what I'm most interested in uh, in this talk. So first, is that these tests of uh, formal reconstructions are as subject to the phenomenon of holism as any other test of an empirical theory. Right, so suppose that uh, this procedure fails. So we put 10, for example, in the, for the position of the body at time two, and uh, the software says the loss are true instead of the loss are false, which is what we would expect. Uh, so what should we make out of this fact. So first of all, the, like the most immediate uh, thing that comes to mind is that the formal reconstruction is inadequate. I mean, it can be inadequate in different, in different senses. For example, uh, there could be a formalization error, right? Uh, for example, we used uh, an existential quantifier and we should have used a universal quantifier. So the laws are correctly, incorrectly formalized, or we could have a, what I call the codification error. So uh, maybe the translation of the application into a formal model is what 
incorrect, but the laws were correctly uh, formalized. A, a, second, a second thing that could be happening is that the informal reconstruction could be inadequate. So perhaps we are competent users of the theory, but we have a, an incorrect grasp of what the laws say. Right? So uh, being able to use the theory and being able to and understanding what the theory says are two different things. Uh, so they could, there could be some mismatch, mismatch uh, in there. Uh, so then, I mean, it might also be the case that our informal reconstruction is inadequate, but the formal uh, reconstruction of our informal theory is correct, and we just carry over the, the mistake that we made before. Uh, thirdly, it could be the case that we are not competent users of the theory, right? So that maybe the software is right and our intuitions about what should be happening are uh, wrong. Uh, and there are many other things that could have gone wrong in this uh, scenario. For example, uh, there may be a, a mistake in the way we input any of the above into the, the software. So, for example, the syntax is designed to be similar to the language we use uh, routinely, but it's not exactly the same. There could, uh, I mean, for me as a programmer, it's also interesting that there could be a bug in, in the code. In very, maybe the software is not doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, there could also be a bug in the programming language uh, in Python, which is what the what software is made in. Uh, or in, in any other part of the, the tool chain that translates Python code into machine code, and there could be a failure in the hardware, but et cetera, et cetera. And of course, as Quine and, uh, and Duem has, have taught us, there could be a, an error in mathematics or in logic or some other theory that's presupposed by classical mechanics. So at these three points, I, I think are interesting in themselves because the use of computer programs in science is uh, pretty much ubiquitous today. But these kinds of factors are not the ones that philosophers usually think about when we talk about uh, holism. So there's actually a lot of uh, accumulated knowledge in the form of uh, lines of code, chip building specifications, uh, etc., cetera, that are, that are typically presupposed in scientific testing. Uh, so much so that it's almost impossible to specify completely the whole set of computational knowledge that is built in into a, a specific run of a specific uh, program. Uh, so again, as a side note, as a side note, I think it's interesting to see that uh, holism in today involves a lot of uh, computational knowledge as well as scientific and mathematical knowledge. Uh, okay, but going back to uh, my original point, uh, on the other hand, I mean, uh, if the result is what we expect, I mean, we expect the one model to say false and another to say true, and this is exactly what happens in the program, we also cannot conclude that the reconstruction is adequate. Why not? Say we formalize uh, every law as uh, E or not P, then any model that should satisfy the loss will satisfy the loss, but as soon as we consider another model that should not satisfy the loss, we will run into trouble. So the point is that uh, in order to conclude that the reconstruction is adequate, one has to test it with many models, testing uh, many different scenarios. Right? Uh, and in the same way, to, con to conclude that structuralism is an adequate meta theory, then you need to evaluate not only a single reconstruction, for example, one of classical mechanics, but you need to evaluate many reconstructions uh, and see that they are all adequate. A second philo philosophical point is that, uh, uh, I mean, empirical tests usually have another uh, salient characteristic, which is that to test a theory, one has to make a, a theoretical prediction and then observe in some sense that doesn't involve applying the theory itself that the prediction actually holds. So that is 
the essence of testing, one, one might say. Like confront the theory with, with something that is external to it. Uh, so if this test that we just looked at uh, counts as empirical test of a meta theory, then what is the meta theoretical prediction? So we're testing, of course, a particular reconstruction, not the meta theory in abstract, but that's usually what happens, right? You don't test the theories in abstract, but you test them through their application. Uh, so applications of a meta theory are particular reconstructions. So to test the meta theory, you need to say, see if the particular reconstructions are adequate. Uh, but again, if these are tests, of uh, meta theory and not just tests of a particular reconstruction, then the question is what is the meta theoretical prediction that we are making? Uh, and to understand this and to answer this, we must understand uh, what empirical claims the, met the meta theory makes about theory, right? So this amounts to asking about the loss of the meta theory. And I mean, I don't yet have a complete answer for this question, but I think it's fairly safe to say that the domain of application of uh, structuralism are standard positions of empirical theories. And what it claims about this domain of application is that given a standard ex exposition of a theory, we should find things like the following. Uh, that is potential and uh, actual models, that is uh, a language and a set of uh, proper axioms. Uh, specializations, constraints, etc. other things that structuralism talks about. And such that uh, what we said before, basically, an application of the theory represented as a potential model should satisfy the fundamental and special laws if and only if the application is informally considered to be successful. Uh, and etc. with the other components of a reconstruction. So, now that this is exactly our testing procedure, and I think this is not surprising because to test uh, any theory, you must see if its loss holds basic. So understanding how to test uh, structural, structuralist reconstruction gives us a very strong hint about what its loss takes, right? If you know how to test uh, an application of classical mechanics, for example, you know what the loss of classical mechanics are. Because to test a theory means to see if the loss holds. So it's, I think it's something sim similar is going on uh, here. Uh, this still seems uh, rather weak. Maybe there's, there are ways to uh, strengthen what the loss, uh, what the special loss of structuralism uh, states. Um, so for example, that uh, theories that are non-trivial should have some uh, potential models that are not that do not satisfy the laws. Uh, if they unify, then they should have some uh, special laws, etc. But once again, this is all speculative. The point is that uh, structuralism does seem to impose some empirical uh, restrictions over its domain of application. So our tests of the meta theory also seem similar to empirical scientific tests in this respect. So the question that I think emerges from these uh, two points that I made is that uh, if the tests of structuralism resemble empirical scientific tests, should we conclude that philosophical meta theory is just another empirical theory? And note that for those of us who have an empiricist or a naturalistic stance, this would actually be very desirable. Uh, According to empiricists, for example, of various tendencies, knowledge is either of the logical, mathematical, uh, conceptual kind or the, of the empirical kind. There's no third category of philosophical knowledge. Uh, so if we can uh, group uh, philosophical meta theory with the uh, empirical knowledge, then we have a clear understanding of where we are uh, standing, which is a usual uh, objection that empiricist philosophy uh, receives. And from a naturalistic per perspective, if science is a part of the natural or the empirical world, the cultural, uh, including the cultural among the, the natural, 
then uh, meta theoretical knowledge de deals with natural phenomenon and, there, and therefore should, at least in principle, be tested as any other knowledge with an empirical code. Right? If one is a naturalist, uh, this does not exclude the possibility, the possibility that some other parts of the philosophy of science uh, are conceptual knowledge or what have you. Uh, but at least, uh, again, we know where we are standing with uh, regarding the issue of scientific uh, meta theory. Uh, so, of course, determining is, I mean, trying to answer the previous question, determining if something is an empirical theory requires some account of what an empirical theory is. Uh, that is, it requires a meta theory. So, determining if the meta theory itself is a scientific uh, theory will necessarily be somewhat circular. But if one is willing to go this route, then uh, all the points we made before, I think, point to the idea that. Uh, at least in many relevant respects, uh, meta theories are very similar to other scientific theories in other fields. The only difference is that, uh, same as classical mechanics deals with particles, natural selection deals with organisms, and meta theories deal with theory. They have a different uh, field of application, but there's no relevant difference as to its uh, empirical. Um, okay, let's leave this behind. And at the conclusions of the work are the following. Uh, there's a systematic way of testing the adequacy of a formal reconstruction, uh, and thus of the meta theory that this reconstruction was, was made with. Uh, this process can be aided with the use of computer programs, uh, specifically uh, reconstructor. Uh, this test are subject to the phenomenon of holism, the uh, same as any other test of any other empirical theory. Uh, they function as tests of the meta theory because they examine some predictions or empirical claims that the meta theory makes. And all the above points to the idea that philosophical meta theories, or at least structuralism, uh, are themselves nothing more and nothing less than uh, empirical scientific theories. 